Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants the Diction, and today I'm going to be talking about book series that I loved as a child. So I was watching this new channel that I just recently found. It's called, uh, I believe her name is Kim, and it's called Middle of the Book March. And so I was like binging her videos, and I came across one where she did a book haul, but it was with her daughter, who's like middle school aged. And I was like, what if on my channel I decided to talk about like series that I loved, you know, when I was younger, a little youngin, you know, just kind of reminiscing and stuff and like talking about it just because I feel like it would be fun. I mean, I already did something kind of like this where I went and reread the book that like scared the crap out of me as a child. And also in one of my recent videos, I mentioned that I really liked Encyclopedia Brown, like when I was a kid. And so I'm thinking the age category that I'm going to go for is like elementary schoolish. Um, just because that seems to be the age that I remember the most books from. And so to just start off with, Encyclopedia Brown, um, for those of you that don't know what this is, he was basically like a boy detective, kind of like, like, if Sherlock was a kid type of thing. And I didn't really remember this until I started reading some information about like the author and just some interviews with him and like things that he said. Apparently, the thing that was great about these books, and I remembered it as soon as I read it, was that like, they wouldn't just tell you the answer to the mystery, like you would kind of have to like figure it out yourself. And then you could check your answer in the back of the book once you read the story. And of course, like, I absolutely loved that. Like, no wonder I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like, because it didn't just tell you the answer, right? Like you had to actually like think and participate. And I don't know, just something about it I like really liked. So I guess that would be like children's mysteries. And I think probably a lot of kids my age were reading stuff like, uh, you know, like the Goosebumps series or Animorphs. Like I remember Animorphs was a big one because um, I remember those covers, <laughs> you know, with the kids like transforming into different stuff. Yeah, I never really read Goosebumps or Animorphs and also Harry Potter. I feel like Harry Potter was a really big one. And I personally like, fundamentalist Christian household, we were not allowed to read Harry Potter because, you know, witchcraft and magic and all that stuff is supposedly associated with the devil. But like, I feel like that's what like other kids my age were into. But like, even then I was like doing something outside of the norm or like being the ultimate hipster. But like, that wasn't really my choice. Like, you know, my parents forbid me from reading Harry Potter. So there was also like a group of boys in my fifth grade class that were obsessed with like acting out scenes from Lord of the Rings during recess. And I assume that was not even based off of the books. I assume it was based off of like the movies because I read the actual Lord of the Rings like once in high school and it was incredibly hard to get through. And also I kept confusing Saruman and Sauron. I kept being like, which one's the giant eyeball again? So like, if I was that confused in high school, I highly doubt any of these elementary schoolers were really like, actually reading those books. I think I really tend to like like series that revolved around like different girls and specifically like historical fiction, like it would be set in the past. And the one that comes to mind is like the Dear America series. I absolutely loved these. Like it would be like, the cover would be like this nice, like big portrait of, you know, a girl in the middle. And then the whole thing would be like her diary. Like she would be from some time in the past. It'd be like set somewhere in the past and the whole thing would be like her writing in her diary. So you got to like learn about, you know, how people lived in whatever era it was set in. And I thought it was so cool. And a lot of the books, like uh, the pages, like the outside of the pages would be gold, which I always thought was like just really classy, I guess. And I don't know, I just, I just liked the like first person narration of the stories of these girls. Like, yeah, like the Royal Diaries, I feel like was a was a series that was like a subset of that. Like the Royal Diaries would be somebody that was like, uh, you know, nobility or they were princesses or they were royal. And then also kind of related to that is like American Girl. Like, I don't know if, if you guys ever read like any of the American Girl growing up. And I don't think I was like obsessed, obsessed with all of them. Like the one that I remember the most is Kit. She was like the one with the like blonde bob or whatever. But I'm pretty sure her books were set like during the depression era. And she's probably the one I remember the most of, even though I know there's more than that. And then also similar to this, Little House on the Prairie. Oh my God, you guys. I loved the Little House on the Prairie books. Like I was, I was so obsessed with them. Like I know that Laura's story continues like beyond, you know, her being a kid. Like I feel like I read a couple of the books where she was like more grown up and more adult and like she had a husband and stuff, but I didn't really like those as much as the ones where like, she was a kid and it was about her and her sister and just like 
her family surviving on the fucking planes of whatever. I don't really know. <laughs> and I, and I honestly, I assume those are kind of like autobiographical, right? Like they're written by Laura Ingalls Wilder and the, the like girl in them is named Laura, if I remember correctly. So like, was that really her life? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I assume she must have had some kind of experience with like living ruggedly. And then like going back to my obsession with like mysteries, there was this absolutely ridiculous series that I remember called Hank the Cow Dog. So the Hank the Cow Dog books, I feel like were, were kind of ridiculous. It was like literally this dog on a ranch who like thought he was like the sheriff or something. And he had like an assistant who was also a dog and just like he would try to like solve mysteries and shit. And I feel like the thing that I really liked about these books was like it had a great voice to it. Like it was very, I don't know, it was like very silly, very humorous. But all the Hank the Cow Dog books would start with like the same line like, hi, it's me again, Hank the Cow Dog. And I just, I don't even know. I loved it so much as a kid. I feel like as a kid, stuff with like anthropomorphic animals was like everywhere. Um, Cause I remember like, and I don't think this would qualify as a series, but like all of the E.B. White books, like Stuart Little, uh, Charlotte's Web, Trumpet of the Swan. Like I loved all of those. Like uh, actually Cricket in Times Square is one that I had completely forgot about. I don't think that's by him, but kind of a similar deal. And then also with like anthropomorphic animals, like obviously this is a bit younger of an age group, but like Little Critter, which I still don't know what that thing was supposed to be. Was it like a hedgehog? Was it a porcupine? Like what was happening? <laughs> and then like Berenstain Bears, um, I kind of remember. I had completely forgotten about this until the other day, but Cat Wings, this was like a children's book series that um, Ursula K. Le Guin did. I mean, I remember reading A Wrinkle in Time when I was a kid, which I then went and tried to read it as an adult and really didn't like. But the cat wings were so adorable. Like it was literally cats with wings and they could fly. And there was this little black one who was obviously like the best one. He was the cutest one. And yeah, I feel like I, I read several of those cat wings. Like that shit was adorable. Also when I was a kid, I remember everyone sort of reading these like warrior cat books and I never got into them, but like I, I remember them. There was also one, it was like about a wolf pack like it focused on the pack itself and like every wolf had like a different personality and they sort of like talked and I don't know like it like it was literally like about a wolf pack and I don't remember what it was called or like what it was about but yeah something about being a kid I don't know if just a lot of kids books have anthropomorphized animals or if that was just like something that I really liked but I find that interesting that's kind of a, a commonality among a lot of these like I was saying with E.B. White um his books weren't really a series, like they were kind of all like standalones, but I feel like also um, Roald Dahl's books, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, um, just like really whimsical children's stories. And I feel like I, I really enjoyed that type of stuff when I was a kid. I think I liked fantasy. Like I feel like a lot of the books I liked when I was younger were like mystery, fantasy, historical fiction, which is really interesting because I'm not sure if it was just those were the things that were available to me or if that was really what I was interested in. I also remember like survival story. Like I remember like the book Hatchet where like the kid's plane crashes, like the pilot has a heart attack and then he has to try to survive on this island with like just a hatchet pretty much. We had like a reading group and we were supposed to read a certain number of chapters like per session and then like come back and discuss it. But I'm pretty sure I like read ahead when I wasn't supposed to because I wanted to know what happened, which I feel like happened a lot. And then also I remember, I specifically remember this because my teacher in fifth grade recommended this to me, but I read The Giver, which I feel like is pretty common, like kids book. But I remember really, really loving that. I don't know, so there's like a lot of individual books that stick out to me, but I kind of wanted to just talk a little bit about like the series that I remembered and also ask you guys like, what is your favorite book series that like you remember from being a kid and I know a lot of people are probably gonna answer Harry Potter but like I don't know because I'm curious because I feel like I didn't read a lot of the series that like most of the kids my age were into like I was on some other shit <laughs> like we all know I'm always on some other shit but I was really on some other shit so yeah I'm just like did other people read these or was it just me and I also know that Rod Dahl wrote some adult short stories or like just short stories in general. And I've really been wanting to check this out because I saw on Sage's channel 
um, at Sage Reads. They had this video where like they went book shopping and they found like these collections by theme of his stories. So it would be stuff like fear and then it would have all his all of his short stories about like fear and then like like a different word and it would be a bunch of short stories around that. So I was like, wow, I really liked his stuff as a kid. So like maybe I should check out his more adult content. But yeah, so what what did you guys enjoy reading as kids? Uh, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear some responses to this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Yeah.